Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial on 3D Pythagoras and trigonometry. Now in order to do this lesson you must have sound prerequisite knowledge in Pythagoras and trigonometry. Now remember Pythagoras only applies to right angled triangles where Pythagoras' theorem is a squared plus b squared is always equal to the hypotenuse squared. It's also important to have knowledge on trigonometry where we're using the three trig ratios with respect to right angled triangles. I've demonstrated them here in these little triangles just so it's easy to identify the rearrangement. Now the trig ratio associated with sin is sin theta is opposite over hypotenuse, cos theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tan theta is opposite over adjacent. Lastly, it's always helpful to know the sine and cosine rule. Now remember the sine and cosine rule applies to any type of triangle, where a over sine a is equal to b over sine b, which is equal to c over sine c. And the cosine rule states a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. So now we've gone through the prerequisites, it's important to know when you're looking at 3D Pythagoras and trigonometry, you'll get all sorts of three-dimensional shapes and it's super important that you identify your right angle triangles where needed and they can pop up in all shapes and sizes. So let's have a look at some exam questions so you can see what I mean. It states that the diagram shows a cuboid A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H and we're asked to find the angle B, H, F to three significant figures. Now this is a nice past exam question because it's identified the right angle triangle for you. What's important to note, whenever you're looking at 3D Pythagoras and trigonometry questions, there's always more than one way to find the solution. I'm just going to show you the most straightforward method. Now, looking at this question, I've got a right angle triangle, a length and an angle, so I know I have to use trigonometry. But in order for me to find this angle, I have to find another length. Now I spot this right angle triangle at the bottom of my cuboid. This will enable me to find length HF, which I can then use with my triangle HFB. So pulling out this triangle, I'm going to see what do I know to help me work out HF. Well, I know HG is 11 centimeters, FG is six centimeters, and I spot I can use Pythagoras. So therefore, hf squared is equal to 11 squared plus 6 squared. This means I have hf squared is equal to 121 at 36. So therefore, hf is equal to root 157. Now I know the length hf is root 157. I can look at my triangle and start working out my angle b hf. Same again, I'm going to highlight this right angle triangle and label my lengths accordingly. Then I spot, because my angle is here, this is my opposite and this is my adjacent. So therefore, I'll be using tan. Substituting what I know, tan theta is equal to 8 over root 157. And to find theta, I simply do the inverse of tan. Therefore, you input into your calculator tan to the minus 1, 8 over root 157. And this will give you the answer for the angle BHF to be 32.6 degrees to three significant figures. So let's have a look at a slightly harder question. Here it states that we're given a diagram and it is a prism. And we know AEFD is a rectangle, ABCD is a square. We have the lengths EB and FC which are perpendicular to the plane ABCD. And we're also given the length AB is 60 centimetres. We're also given the length AD is 60 centimetres. We know ABE is 90 degrees and angle BAE is 30 degrees. We're asked to calculate the angle that the line DE makes with the plane ABCD. And we're asked to give our answer correct to one decimal place. So what's important is to identify what is the angle the examiner wants us to find. Well, all you have to do is identify the length DE and make an angle with the base ABCD, making a right angle triangle. Now I've helped you identify the right angle triangle. See if you can work it out without me. Remember, there's more than one way to do this, so don't worry if your method is a little different, as long as you have clear, correct, structured working out. So looking at our right angle triangle, I need a bit more information in order for me to find out what theta is. 
So looking at my diagram, I can spot I have another right angle triangle at the base of our prism, which will enable me to find the length DB. So pulling out this right angle triangle, I can see I've got length DA is 60 centimeters and AB is 60 centimeters. I spot Pythagoras' theorem again. So therefore, DB squared is equal to 60 squared add 60 squared. This is equal to 3,600 and 3,600, which is then telling me DB is root 7,200. Simplifying this gives me DB to be 60 root 2. So now I know DB is 60 root 2. So this will definitely help me find out what theta is. But I need a bit more information. I also spot another right angle triangle here, triangle AEB. Remember, the question did tell me that this is 30 degrees. So I can use this right angle triangle with the angle 30 degrees and length 60 centimeters to help me find length EB. So spotting that I need to find length EB, I can see this is my opposite and my adjacent. So therefore, I'll be using tan. Given the fact that I need to find the opposite length, I have to do a rearrangement. So you can use these triangles if you want, and I can see to find the opposite, it's simply tan theta multiplied by the adjacent. Substituting what we know, well I know BE is the opposite, which I need to find, tan 30 multiplied by 60. Therefore, I can work out BE to be 20 root 3. So now I know BE is 20 root 3, and I know DB is 60 root 2, I have another right angle triangle, and I can use this right angle triangle to find theta. Once again, I've got my opposite and adjacent, so I need to use tan. Substituting what I know, well, the angle is theta, my opposite is 20 root 3, and my adjacent is 60 root 2. To find theta, I must do the inverse of tan, so inputting into your calculator tan to the minus 1, 20 root 3 over 60 root 2, gives me a final answer of theta to be 22.2 degrees to one decimal place. Remember, you may have chosen a different method to get the answer, as long as you're getting the correct answer with correct structured working out. So looking at a different 3D shape, we have A, B, C, D, E is a square base pyramid. It states that A, E is equal to B, E, which is equal to C, E, which is equal to D, E, which is also 12 centimeters. We also know A, B is 15 centimeters. The question wants us to work out the size of angle D, E, B, giving our answer correct to the nearest degree. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. Highlighting angle DEB shows that I need to work out this angle here, and the examiner was very kind enough to identify some right angle triangles, so I'm just going to highlight one here. In other words, if I find out what this angle is, which is theta divided by 2, I can double it to give me my entire angle DEB. Now I know this length, so I need to find another length to enable me to find out what this angle is. Now I can spot again Pythagoras' theorem using my base length BD. I know that this length BD can be found using Pythagoras because it's a square base pyramid. I have BA is 15 centimeters, AD is 15 centimeters, so I can work out DB. Using Pythagoras, DB squared is 15 squared at 15 squared, which is equal to 225 at 225. Working this out, I know db is equal to root 450. Simplifying, I know db is 15 root 2. But I don't need the entire length db. I only need half of it in order for me to find this angle. So halving it gives me 7.5 root 2. Now I have enough information for this right angle triangle to help me find out what theta over 2 is. Looking at my angle here, this is the opposite, and this is the hypotenuse. So therefore, I'm going to be using sin theta. Substituting what we know, I know sin theta over 2 is equal to 7.5 root 2 over 12. So therefore, 
to find theta over 2, it would be sine to the minus 1 of 7.5 root 2 over 12, giving me theta over 2 to be 62.1 degrees. Therefore, I know theta, which is angle DEB, is 124 degrees to the nearest degree. There is an alternative way you could have used to work out angle DEB. Now to use it, I'm going to be using the cosine rule, because I spotted I don't have a right angle triangle if I were to use DEB. I know this is 12 centimeters, I know this is 12 centimeters, and we've worked out BD to be 15 root 2. So I could have used cosine rule to find out what that theta is. Substituting in terms of B, D and E, to find theta, it would be cos theta is equal to B squared plus D squared minus R E squared over 2 B D. Substituting what we know, this would be 12 squared, add 12 squared, subtract R 15 root 2 all squared, divided by 2 lots of the B D. Working this out identifies cos theta to be minus 0.5625, confirming that the final angle for theta is 124 degrees. So you had a couple of different options to work out what the angle DEB is, but remember it doesn't make a difference as long as you show correct structured working out. Now let's have a look at another exam question where we have another type of 3D shape. Here's a prism, A, B, C, D, S, P, Q, R, and we know the base A, B, C, D of the prism is a square, with each length being 14 centimetres. Now it does say the point T lies on the line B, C, such that B, T to T, C is in the ratio of 4 to 3. Now it states that the cross section of the prism is in the shape of a trapezium, and it has an area of 140 centimetres squared. And it also states that CR is 12 centimetres. The question wants us to find the size of the angle between the line ST and the base ABCD. We're asked to give our answer correct to one decimal place. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. First of all, let's identify the angle between ST and this base ABCD. Here we have our right angle triangle, where this angle theta is made between the ST and our base. Now with these tricky questions, I always say to my students, do one sentence at a time. So let's start with using our 14 centimeter length BC and splitting it in the ratio of 4 to 3. So knowing we need to divide 14 centimetres in the ratio of 43, this means 14 centimetres is equivalent to a total of 7 parts, because 4 parts and 3 parts is 7 parts. Therefore, let's find out 1 part by simply dividing both sides by 7, giving me 2 centimetres is 1 part. Now if I know 2 centimetres is 1 part, and this represents 4 parts, therefore I know 1 length has to be 8 centimetres, because 4 multiplied by 2 is 8. The other length is 3 parts, so I simply multiply 3 by our 2 to give me 6 centimetres. So therefore, we know BT represents 8 centimetres, and TC represents 6 centimetres, giving me a total length of 14 centimetres, where the lengths BT to TC are in the ratio of 4 to 3. So now we know some lengths, let's see if this helps us at all. Well, in order for me to find any length associated with this triangle, I need to find maybe DT. And I can spot another right angle triangle right here. I know that I can work out DT because I have a right angle triangle made from D, C to T. We've just worked out CT to be 6 centimetres and we know DC is 14 centimetres. So once again, I spot Pythagoras. So to work out DT, it's simply DT squared is equal to 14 squared add 6 squared. So therefore DT squared is 196 add 36, giving me DT to be root 232. Simplifying gives me DT to be 2 root 58. So now I know D to T is 2 root 58, 
I wonder if there's anything else in the question that can help me find another length. Well, it does state that the cross section of the prism is in the shape of a trapezium and it's got an area of 147 centimeters squared. So I know I have a trapezium with an area. Now, remember the formula associated with trapeziums. It's made by a half times the height times a plus b, where the a and the b are the parallel lengths and the height is always perpendicular to the parallel lengths. So let's substitute what we know from our trapezium. Well, the area is 147. I know the height is 14. I don't know what this length is, but I do know I add my other parallel length, which is 12. Working this out, I've got 147 is equal to 7 multiplied by a plus 12. Dividing both sides by 7 gives me 21 equal to a plus 12. So now I know a is 9 centimetres. In other words, I now know length AP is 9 centimetres, so therefore I know length SD is 9 centimetres. Now I have my right angled triangle with a couple of lengths to enable me to find out what theta is. Now to find theta, I'm using my opposite and my adjacent, so I'm using tan. Substituting what I know, my opposite is 9 over my adjacent, which is 2 root 58. Doing the inverse of tan, 9 over 2 root 58, gives me my final answer between ST and the base ABCD to be 30.6 degrees to one decimal place. So, in summary, 3D Pythagoras and trigonometry can appear in all sorts of different 3D shapes. Cuboids, triangular prisms, pyramids, and many more. Just remember to show a structured working out, and remember there's more than one way to get the solution. A prerequisite to tackle any 3D Pythagoras and trig questions is to make sure you know Pythagoras and trigonometry, and it's always helpful to have knowledge on the sine and cosine rule. If you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next video.